we are on day two of the uh, build. Uh, welcome back to Dean's Dust Pen. So there's a lot of things I want to get done today. Um, but the first thing I want to do is I want to take these dowel rods that are going to be our legs and I need to cut them down. Um, since now we're going to start playing with the uh, skulls and working towards getting that aspect of the table done, I want something a little bit easier to you know, handle than a three foot long dowel rod. Um, a lot of what I'm doing for this design is based off the coffee table I have inside that, I'll be honest, we're probably going to build a second coffee table on this channel because I've never really liked my coffee table. Cheap one from Walmart. Never liked it. So, maybe down the line. Anyway, um, that all to be said, uh, the coffee table I have is 16 inches uh, tall. So, uh, now that we know that 16 inches is the coffee table I have, which, in all honesty, good, good height. Never had any complaints. Just don't like it. Yeah. Anyway, so we know it's going to be 16 inches tall. Um, since I'm going to be putting on a 3 quarter inch thick uh, tabletop, that means I'm going to need my dowel rod to be 15 and a quarter inches long. Now, there's multiple ways I could break down these dowel rods. Um, I have a miter saw, chop saw, whatever you want to call it over there. Um, I could do it with the hand saws that are hanging up there, but all those lead to human error. So what we're going to use today is I'm going to use my uh, table saw over there. I figure if we get it measured once, shove four of these things through there, we are guaranteed that all four, even if I'm off by a quarter inch, all four are the same. No human error. That's a big one because nobody's perfect. I'm far from perfect. So we're going to go uh, over to the table saw and we're going to measure out 15 and a quarter inches and we're going to break these suckers down. Yeah, so let's get to it. All right, so what I have here is a 10-inch uh, table saw, or 10-inch blade table saw. Uh, first thing you want to do, since he has an adjustable blade height, reach down in here. We just want to make sure that we raise this blade up here high enough that it's going to clear whatever I'm cutting. So, perfect, we're above the blade. Now, I said it before, I don't trust things. So I do have a ruler scale on here that says we can mark it at 15 and a quarter. But the one thing is, there it is over here. Um, I always have been taught, don't trust it. So I'm going to take a ruler here, or a ruler, a tape measure. I just want to make sure that the blade is at 15 and a quarter. And to be honest, it's not. So even though it's marked at 15 and a quarter here, we're going to have to play with it just a little bit. Make sure that we are actually cutting at 15 and a quarter. Uh, nothing in life is perfect. So we're going to do our best to get the 15 and a quarter, which looks like we good there. Fifteen and a quarter on one end. Fifteen and a quarter on the other end. All right. So now we know we got a fifteen and a quarter inch cut. So all we got to do is just shove this through. Now I got a guide here just to make sure that my hands don't get pinched in this process because I rather like my hands. So. Let's give it a quick zap. Once the blade stops spinning, there we go. Should be 15 and a quarter. Where did I put the, there it is. And double check. Hooray! 15 and a quarter. And the best part is, is we're using a table saw, no human error. I can easily do this three more times. So let's bust it out real fast. yesterday 
Safety third. So excited to get moving. I didn't even think about this for my first cut. But again, safety. Forgot about the eyes. Remember the hands, right? So, part of the way there. So here we are on the set of uh, Red Deck Cooking with Billy Ray, a.k.a. My Kitchen. Uh, so there's another aspect to this build that uh, I have a problem with. Uh, I'm going to be doing some painting. And that problem comes down to I'm colorblind. Uh, that's why you see me wear a lot of black. And I understand paint theory. I understand what colors to use. Because, I mean, we all know the grass is green, the sky is blue, the fire truck's red. Bullshit like that. Uh, the problem comes down to buying paint. I do not know why you people that can see color and the people that make the damn colors think we have to have fun names. Just call it freaking red or something like that. No, all of a sudden we got, you know, flamingo pink and we got, you know, rubber ducky, which I apparently is a yellow. Just label them the normal way. Anyway, I digress. Whatever I do things with paint and I need specific colors, you got to call in a ringer. Because once I know what paint tube color means what, it's smooth sailing. So today, we're going to go get one of my uh, longest running ringers. Let's go grab them. So I'm out here at Walmart now and I uh, need to get paint, right? I said I need to bring in a ringer. So I brought in the best ringer I know. The one that's been helping me for 40 years. <laughs> Mom. So Mom is going to do what she's been doing for a long time. We're going to go inside. We're going to pick out some paint. She's going to tell me what blood red means and tell me what color it is so let's go paint shopping and this is exactly why I bring someone to go paint shopping with me because I don't care what any of you people say right there all those colors don't care if they have different names they're all the same damn color all right so now we've got to do the arts and crafts portion of this build so my skulls from uh, yesterday they're all dried uh, they're hypothetically bone white um, antique white is technically what we used um, at this point, we've seen the clip. Yeah, colorblind. Not much I can do about it. It's genetic. So, uh, since it comes from mom's side of the family, that's why mom helps me out a lot. Love her for that. Um, so, with arts and crafts, first thing we need is this big old toolbox there. Uh, that right there was owned by my great grandfather. That was his toolbox. Just like most things I own, a little beaten up, a little run down. But what this is for me is every single, kind of see it, but paints, brushes, I got all sorts of stuff in here. Uh, so specifically for what I'm about to do, I need a fine tip brush. Maybe a medium tip brush. Yeah, those will work. And obviously, I need paint. Now, yesterday, went to the paint store, or Walmart, I should say, with mom. Got my paints. So, let's just talk about that for a second from the, uh, the colorblind aspect. Um, I can tell you that I will be using a uh, chocolate sprinkle, chestnut, ooh, and classic caramel as my dirt elements on this skull. Um, in general, God bless them, basic white, basic black, no fancy names here. Um, and then on this skull, eventually I needed uh, blood red, which apparently blood red, according to my mom, red apple. So uh, this skull is going to be the first one I paint. Um, I do not own easel, painter palettes, things like that. I like paper plates. So we're going to kind of zoom in and uh, we'll do time lapse. Now, the downside to YouTube, I can't put in a bitchin' soundtrack. Um, ends up being copyright claimed. So, I'll put a few of my favorite songs inside the description. You can see what I like to listen to because the stereo is going to be going on behind me. And then you guys will get uh, whatever the heck is free through the YouTube uh, 
website. They have free copyright, free music. No channel strikes, no copyright infringement. So, sorry. I'm going to be enjoying what I'm listening to, but sorry. So, yeah. Oh, uh, last thing too, by the way, uh, for what I'm doing to get dirt on this thing, little uh, crafting sponges. Dip, dip. Yeah, that's how we're going to do it. So we got my dirt. We got some black and white. Some bone if I need it here. And then we're going to need some blood. Let's do this. Okay, so there we go. I think we're okay. Skull number one uh, went for a very dirty looking skull. So I needed a little bit of help to do this uh, last skull. This beautiful little girl is my niece Anna Mae, and she has the right size hands to add the handprints I want on the sides of these skulls. So Anna has graciously volunteered to get some red hands for me. <laughs> Yeah. So we're gonna paint your hands up real quick, honey. So go ahead. We'll. Yep. Yeah. And remember, I cleared this with your mom, so I can't get in trouble, and neither can you. Now, granted, I didn't. Uncle Tyler didn't exactly tell her every part of what we was doing today, but either way, <laughs> does it tickle? I know. Yeah. So either way, your mom technically kind of knows what we're doing here. So we got that. And before we do anything, I'm going to actually kind of take off a little bit of it here and there. Okay. So, all right. So I'm going to hand this to you and do exactly what we said. Grab it. Okay. Put your hands in. Squeeze. Okay. Let go. And that is Anna May's handprints <laughs> on the outside of it. Thank you very much, honey. Thank you for doing that for me. All right. Let's get you cleaned up before your mom gets upset at us. Oh, so you want to say congratulations to Kate and Opal? Can you say congratulations? Congratulations. All right, there we go. Looks like I'm going to need to stop the video here. It seems to be getting kind of long, and there's quite a lot more footage from day two. So I feel like a 14-minute video is going to be what we're going to call it. So I hope you enjoyed uh, part one of day two. Uh, we'll be back later for part two of day two. For now, this is me signing out uh, from Dean's Dustbin. Please like, share, subscribe, and if you're feeling frisky, hit that bell icon. Then we'll see you down the line uh, for the next part. So, have yourself a good one. Later.